Hi students, I am Premit Sebastian Paul. In this lecture, we are discussing the UML analysis model. The Unified Modeling Language, that is UML, is a graphical language for the object-oriented analysis and design that gives a standard way to write a software system's blueprint. It helps to visualize, specify, construct, and document the artifacts of an object-oriented system. It is used to depict the structure and the relationship in a complex system. The history begins from 1990s as an amalgamation of several techniques. Firstly, it coordinated the prominent OOAD techniques, which was introduced by Grady Book. Second one was the James Rombok's OMT, that is Object Modeling Technique. And the third one is OOSE, that is Object Oriented Software Engineering, which was introduced by Ivor Jacobson. The UML attempts to standardize semantic models, syntactic notation, and diagrams for OOAD. So next we are going to discuss about the systems and models in UML. The system is a set of elements organized to achieve certain objectives from a system. Systems are often divided into subsystems and described by a set of models. A model is a simplified, complete, and consistent abstraction of a system created for better understanding of the system. And a view is a projection of a system's model from a specific perspective. When it comes to the conceptual model of UML, the conceptual model of UML encompasses three major elements. Those major elements are basic building blocks, rules, and common mechanism. And we are going to discuss in detail about each of these elements. Firstly, we are discussing the basic building blocks. When it comes to the basic building blocks, there are three basic blocks of UML. Those includes things, relationships, and diagrams. So firstly, we are discussing the things. There are four kind of things in UML, namely structural thing, behavioral thing, grouping thing, and annotational things. The structural things are the nouns of the UML model representing the static elements that may be either physical or conceptual. The structural things are class, interface, collaboration, use case, active class, components, and nodes. Secondly, the behavioral things are the verbs of the UML model representing the dynamic behavior over time and space. The two types of behavioral things are interaction and state machine. Third one is the grouping things. It comprises the organizational parts of the UML model. There is only one kind of grouping things, that is package. Fourth one is the annotational thing. These are the explanations in the UML models representing the comments applied to describe elements. Secondly, we are discussing the relationship. Relationships are the connection between the things. The four type of relationships that can be represented in UML are dependency, association, generalization, and realization. Firstly, the dependency is a semantic relationship between two things such that a change in one thing bring a change in the other. The former is the independent thing, while the latter is the dependent thing. Secondly, the association is a structural relationship that represents a group of links having common structure and common behavior. The generalization represents a generalized or specialized relationship in which subclass inherit structure and behavior from the superclass. Fourth one is the realization. This is a semantic relationship between two or more classifiers such that one classifier lay down a contract that the other classifier ensures to abide by. So my dear students, next we are discussing the diagrams. A diagram is a graphical representation of a system. It comprises of a group of elements generally in the form of a graph. UML includes nine diagrams and these diagrams are class diagram, object diagram, use case diagram, sequence diagram, collaboration diagram, state chart diagram, activity diagram, component diagram, and deployment diagram. So my dear students, these three factors are the major elements of the building blocks of the UML. 
Secondly, we are going to discuss about the point rules. When it comes to the rules, the UML has a number of rules so that the models are semantically self-consistent and related to other models in the system harmoniously. UML has semantic rules for the following. So the UML has the rules for names, scope, visibility, integrity and execution. So the third point is the common mechanism. The UML has four common mechanisms and those common mechanisms are specifications, adornments, common divisions and extensibility mechanism. So when we are discussing the first point specification, in UML behind each graphical notation there is a textual statement denoting the syntax and semantics. These are the specifications. The specifications provide a semantic backplane that contain all the part of a system and the relationship among the different parts. Second one is the adornments. Each element in the UML has a unique graphical notation. Besides, there are notations to represent the important aspects of an element like name, scope, visibility, etc. Third one is the common divisions. Object-oriented system can be divided in many ways. The two common ways of division are division of classes and object and the division of interface and implementation. The first division, that is the division of classes and object. A class is an abstraction of a group of similar object. An object is a concrete instances that has actual existence in the system. When it comes to the second point, that is the division of interface and implementation. An interface defines the rules for interaction. Implementation is a concrete realization of the rules defined in the interface. So my students, we are discussing our last point, that is the extensibility mechanism. The UML is an open-ended language. It is possible to extend the capability of UML in a controlled manner to suit the requirement of a system. Extensibility mechanisms are stereotype, tagged values, and constraints. So firstly, the stereotype, it extends the vocabulary of the UML through which new building blocks can be created out of existing one. The second one is the tagged value. It extends the property of UML building blocks. The third one is the constraints and it extends the semantic of UML building blocks. So my dear students, in this lecture, we had just introduced the UML for the OOAD and we had discussed about the di different diagrams that is nine different diagrams in uml and definitely we should discuss these nine diagrams with certain examples so my dear students hope you had understood this topic so dear students kindly write down the assignment our assignment question is write in detail about the uml analysis model so my dear students in the upcoming lecture we will discuss the uml basic notations so dear students, see you soon. Until then, goodbye. Thank you and all the best.